10 strange phenomena science can't explain. It is necessary to travel to some rather out of the way locations to examine some of the greatest mysteries in the scientific community. These locations include the bottom of the oceans, the interior of the human brain, the summits of mountains, and even the end of time. This is exactly what we've done on Unexplainable, a science podcast that Vox began in March to investigate the most significant, fascinating, and mind-boggling problems that remain unresolved in the scientific community. We set out with the intention of posing significant inquiries that motivate scientists in their line of work. These are inquiries that fill scientists with awe or a feeling of purpose, or that serve to remind them that the universe is still an extremely large and potentially fruitful place. We have compiled a list of the top 10 phenomena that have surprised us the most. Number 10. What does the vast majority of the cosmos consist of? What constitutes the cosmos is a straightforward inquiry with a perplexing lack of a satisfactory response. It has been discovered that all of the stars and all of the galaxies and all of the cosmos are not even close to being able to account for all that is out there. The vast majority of the matter that exists in the cosmos is truly invisible, cannot be touched, and has not been found yet. It's been nicknamed dark matter, and even though researchers have been looking for it for decades, they still don't know what it is. Number 9. What kind of organisms call the twilight zone of the ocean their home? When you are approximately 200 meters below the surface of the ocean, you enter what is referred to as the twilight zone. This is because the amount of sunlight that can penetrate the water decreases as you descend deeper. As the sunlight disappears almost entirely from vision, so does our understanding of these shadowy depths. Anne One Lavery, an acoustician at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, told Bird Pinkerton of Fox that it's almost easier to define it by what we don't know than what we do know. But, this particular part of the ocean is of utmost significance. It's probable but not certain that more fish are living in the twilight zone than there are in the rest of the ocean combined. Creatures that live in the deep ocean have a significant part in controlling the temperature of the planet's atmosphere. Number 8. What killed Venus? The surface of Venus, the second planet from the Sun, is best described as a hellscape, as this is the most accurate adjective available. It is the planet with the highest average temperature in the solar system, which is 900 degrees Fahrenheit. This is due in part to the fact that its atmosphere is almost entirely composed of carbon dioxide. A volcanic landscape characterized by razor-sharp lava flows is covered in thick clouds of sulfuric acid, which are extremely corrosive. The pressure that you'd feel on the surface of Venus is approximately 92 times greater than the pressure that you'd feel at sea level on Earth. This is a crushing fact. But, some scientists believe that Venus was once very similar to Earth and that it even had oceans of liquid water. Like the ones that are necessary for the existence of life on our planet. This raises an existential query regarding the existence of life on Earth. According to Robin, the real question is why are we here, and she says thus of the situation. To quote George Andrews, Number 7. What will the appearance of animals be like in the years to come? Although it is impossible to know with absolute certainty how evolution will proceed in the years to come, that does not mean that we should not attempt to do so. Reporter Mandy Nguyen posed the question to various scientists, including biologists and other specialists. What would animals look like in one million years? The knowledgeable individuals took the query very seriously. According to Liz Alter, a professor of evolutionary biology at California State University Monterey Bay, I do think it's a really useful and necessary activity. Nguyen was informed of this by Alter. When considering the factors that will determine the course of life on Earth in the future, we need to take into account how humans are presently altering their surrounding habitats. Number 6. What are the causes of Alzheimer's disease? After decades of research, Alzheimer's disease, a neurodegenerative condition that can lead to dementia, does not have a treatment that is considered to be very successful, nor does it have a cure. Why? To give just one example, medical professionals do not have a full comprehension of the factors that contribute to the condition. It has been widely believed for several years that Alzheimer's disease is brought on by the accumulation of substances in the brain known as amyloids, which function like plaques. Nevertheless, medications that help remove amyloids from the brain don't appear to be highly effective in preventing or treating the condition. 
some academics believe that Alzheimer's researchers have been putting too much emphasis on this one idea, to the detriment of their efforts to investigate other possible causes, such as viral infections. Number 5. What makes the yellow slime that is often known as slime mold so intelligent? The creature known as slime mold is deceptively straightforward despite its extraordinary degree of complexity. In a strict sense, we can classify them as single, celled organisms. On the other hand, a large number of slime mold cells can join together to form a single massive organism that is capable of, well, thinking. It appears that slime mold can make judgments involving risk and benefit and can solve mazes. There's even evidence to suggest that slime mold is capable of telling time. They accomplish all of this without even possessing a single brain cell or a brain. Whatever it is that allows slime mold to find solutions to these challenges, it has developed in a way that is distinct from how people have done so. What steps do they take to accomplish this goal? And what insights does it provide for us on the components that make up the intelligence? Number 4. What is the maximum age that a human can attain? Is there a person alive today who was the first person to reach the age of 150 on the human scale? We don't have any idea. In the majority of regions of the world, the average human lifespan has increased during the past few decades. Nevertheless, it is not known whether there is a limit. Is it possible for a human to survive into their 200th year? Likely, the science and medicine that would make anything like that doable are already in the works. Yet. If it is successful, it will pose some troubling concerns for society to answer. Number 3. Are long, all symptoms unique to COVID-19? Millions of people all over the world have struggled with the long-term effects of COVID-19 for several weeks or months after their initial infection has been cleared up. These symptoms can last for quite some time. Some researchers in the field of science believe that COVID is not the only animal that exhibits these long-haul symptoms. They contend, rather, that many different kinds of viral infections can leave people with long-term symptoms, which are frequently under-recognized in medical practice. The question that needs to be answered is, what links all of these persistent symptoms together? Number 2. Why do medical professionals not have a better understanding of endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition in which tissue that is comparable to that which grows inside the uterus grows in other areas of the body. It is a long-term disorder that can cause excruciating levels of pain and disability. Yet, medical professionals do not have a complete understanding of what causes it, and there are few available therapeutic choices. Worse yet, many patients who have endometriosis report that their doctors are dismissive of their concerns about the condition. The process of getting a correct diagnosis might take several years, and research into the disorder has received little funding. Number 1. Why do humans even have anuses, let alone butts? This is a question that we never realized we wanted an answer to until we heard Catherine Wu of the Atlantic explain that the advent of the anus was important in animal development. This is a question that we have never even known we wanted an answer to. Before the development of the anus, it was necessary for animals to both feed and defecate through the same opening. Because of the anus, the system was able to become more efficient, which in turn enabled the animal life on Earth to become larger and take on new shapes and forms. Yet, researchers do not have a full understanding of the evolutionary history of this topic. Specifically, they do not know which species formed the anus first or when this occurred. It's extremely difficult to examine something that must be millions and millions of years old yet doesn't fossilize, says Wu. That just doesn't make sense, says Wu. How was the video? Did you enjoy it? Post your feedback in our comment section below. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates.